that quarterback list going into the season had everyone going nuts. You know, Mark, Lamar Jackson, the one that ESPN put out, Lamar Jackson out of the top ten, I uh, think like Dak at eight and Brady at number four, whatever it was. After three weeks into the season, could you give me the actual top five quarterbacks in the NFL right now? I mean, I think you have to go uh, right now, uh, in no order, I think okay. you have to go – Jalen Hurts, Tua. <laughs> uh, so far through th- through three games, if we're just going off of this season, not off of yeah. resume, not right, off of anything right, else, yeah. just this yeah. season, I think you have to go Jalen Hurts, you have to go Tua, you got to go Lamar Jackson, Josh Allen, and I mean, you can make an argument for the fifth one. That's usually where lists start to get a little sketchy anyway. Mahomes? Um, yeah, I didn't say Patrick. Not yet. I don't. I, I, I don't Patrick. think you so. Did, no, did, but yeah, did, he's did, oh, okay. So Tua, Tua, Jalen, okay. Lamar. Oh no, I didn't. Okay, yeah. No, so did, Patrick. Yeah. I, I thought I already said Patrick. My bad. Uh, Tua, Jalen, Lamar, Patrick, and Josh Allen in in no particular order. I like that, but I, you know, you're in LA right now. You both are in LA now. Ooh, so mad, jealous of both of you. But you know, Justin Herbert was supposed to be like the second best quarterback into the, in the NFL going into the season. And I mean, I think when he was healthy and on the field, he did look like that guy. Especially early on, their game against the Chiefs. That was one where there were ample opportunity for both teams to win in that. He's got some of those space alien throws to him, but now it's going to be the problem for the rest of the season with that of all right, is he ever going to be healthy enough to put this together? Because every performance we see from him from here on out, when things go bad, I'm going to look and say, all right, the guy's got cracked rib cartilage and he plays a position where you got to rotate your trunk every time you go to throw the football. But also, they need to find a way to balance the offense out. You can't ask him to throw the ball 45 times, even if he doesn't have broken cartilage, whatever that means. And run the ball for 26 yards, you know, winning that way, no matter if your amazing quarterback is healthy or not. I think the Chargers are cursed, man. Like, I like Justin Mm -hmm. Herbert a lot. I loved him coming out of that uh, Rose Bowl game, like going into the draft. I was like, he looks great. Forget whatever I thought he was in college. They were clearly using him wrong. Uh, He's been flying under the radar. He's going to be a great NFL quarterback. But – and we talked about this on the show today. I do think you are evaluated by your peers. Like Joe Burrow would just played in the Super Bowl. He took the Cincinnati Bengals to the Super Bowl. He was sacked nine times in a playoff game against the uh, number one team in the AFC in the Tennessee the Titans. Bengals. Yeah. yeah, that happened in the playoff game, right? Because I know that he got sacked yes. like seven. Yeah. Was it seven or nine? Whatever. They sacked him a bunch of times and he won. And I then most quarterbacks wouldn't do that. He played in the Super Bowl in February. Tua is now 3-0 and and looks like the guy in Miami. Jalen Hurts is also 3-0 and and looks like the guy in Philadelphia and is blowing Tua and Justin Herbert out of the water in rushing yards as a quarterback. So, I mean, at one point or another, Justin Herbert's going to have to make some actual noise in the winning and postseason category. Yes. We know what we, well, we know he's... We know he's beautiful. We know he throws the ball. We know he can make unbelievable plays. Yeah. But so far, it's been a beauty pageant and it's it's not it's not quantifiable yet. Well, and I think for Justin, the one thing that especially with all the injury, cuz now you got Keenan Allen out of the lineup for them still that they've been dealing with Later. down Rashawn Slater, Joey Bosa's on IR, your center Corey Lindsley's been out. Like it's it's hell there. Like you said, it is cursed. I think Mina Kaim said that they're a house where you're buying a beautiful house that someone's been murdered in when you take the Chargers head coaching job. <laughs> and it's too accurate. And so for Justin Herbert, the thing that we're right or wrong going to throw in his lap is kind of the Joe Burrow thing where if you are that good in most people's minds quarterback-wise, you're going to be able to elevate the parts beyond what you've got around you. And that's the thing for, I think, as good as... I'm not going to take anything away from Tua and Jalen, but I think we're still going to be waiting for a point where, especially for Jalen Hurts, who's been sensational, but the talk of that team is the parts around him are so good. He's been put in the perfect spot to succeed, and he's going out there and doing it right now when one of these guys has to start to deal with 
injury attrition, the things that go along in the season, are you going to have one of those guys that can play hero ball enough to go and do it? Or is it going to be, hey man, like hopefully these rosters just stay healthy and we get these juggernaut teams to go. I mean, health is the number one determinant of success in the NFL most years anyway, but Justin Herbert's getting thrown into that fire very early. You could say Lamar Jackson's dealt with some of that just because the offensive line's on their like fourth left tackle now, but offensively a lot more weapons back around there that's I think kind of where Herbert's at right now is the thing where Mahomes has gotten used to and now we're seeing him get which is yeah it's not always going to be sweet but at this point we expect you to do what Burrow did last year and kind of lift a team that can't protect you beyond what this is supposed to be yeah I I hear that I don't know that I can cry a river for Justin Herbert quite yet because to your point, every team's going to deal with injuries, even if they have a ton of injuries, and maybe it's a lost season already with the specific injuries that they do have. But, I mean, Lamar definitely dealt with this last year, mm-hmm. 100%. And Lamar also got hurt himself last year. Uh, Joe Burrow certainly dealt with this and got hurt himself. So I, I've, I've, I've created a new rule for myself, and I'm, I'm trying to get it to catch on around the industry where I don't deduct points from you for playing around good players. Because I feel like we do this a lot with Patrick Mahomes, and we do it with a lot. We're doing it with Jalen Hurts. We're doing it with Tua. um, And it's like, if you're bad or you're not great with lesser talents, then depending on how we feel about you, it's not your fault or it is your fault. And then when you get good talents, it's always a talent around you. So, like, for example, Josh Allen. We all thought Josh Allen was bad his first year. If you thought Josh Allen was great, good for you. But everyone else thought that Josh (laughs) Allen was bad because he wasn't good. Okay, he wasn't. He had the physical attributes and he wasn't good. Now, Josh Allen has legitimate pieces around him and he's great. But he also developed over those years as well. So is it Josh Allen or is it the pieces around him? I think it's both. But I'm not going to take points away from Josh Allen because he throws to Stephon Diggs. The Bills should bring in pieces around the quarterback to make him better. It's a dependent position, just like a wide receiver is a dependent position. Quarterback is very much a dependent position. It's dependent on the offensive line. It's dependent on the run game. It's dependent on the coaching. It's dependent on the wide receivers. And then you also have to be good yourself. So it might be the most dependent position. So I'm not going to take points away from from any player who plays around other good players. Most good teams have good players. Great oh, and I mean, and we should want that for most players but because we like see we how like, often t- we always talk about it. Like we're like, like Patrick Mahomes went to the perfect situation. Okay, but he's also awesome in the per- like. We've also seen people go right. to great situations and run that Lamborghini right off the cliff. <laughs> so you should get credit for being great around other great players, and we should acknowledge when players are excelling in situations where they don't have necessarily all the right pieces around them. I think Lamar is the perfect example of that last part you described because he was the MVP through half of last season because he was playing with nothing and nobody around him. Right. And I feel like we did, for the most part, a pretty good job of acknowledging that when it was going on. The other part you just described, and this vision just came into my head, of a player like Jalen Hurts or Tua who does have good players around them now, which is what every organization wants to do. It's what the Ravens and Bills did so well. You're absolutely right for Josh and Lamar. It's like if you were to go to a bowling alley and play with the bumpers up. But you go out there and you're throwing strikes every time without touching them. You're throwing a beautiful ball down the lane that doesn't hit the bumpers at all. Just because you've got those safeguards there, if you're still going out and doing great things within the body of that, then it shouldn't matter. Yeah, it gives you peace of mind. You know you've got backup because you've got all these other people around. But if you still go and execute to a high level, why are we going to judge you for them being up? You're not making, you're making this part of it better. You're still improving all the things around you. So that's as good of a, like, forced analogy as I can come up with. But the most prescient example of this joy is Trevor Lawrence this year, right? We saw that guy in hell last year with Urban Meyer. And now all of a sudden, Doug Peterson comes down and whispers sweet nothings into his ear. And they sign Christian Kirk. And, you know, the roster gets a year older. And now we're seeing this guy thrive. And it feels like he's starting to get a bunch of credit that he absolutely deserves. But it's because the circumstances around him changed. Yeah, I think Trevor Lawrence gets the ultimate pass, though. Like, for being a guy that we were talking about being in the NFL after his freshman year in college, 
I think we all collectively were like, whoa, bad deal, bro. <laughs> we're going to give you a pass on that one. Like, you get a year where we just don't talk about anything that happened that year. Uh, it's not on you. And I love that he is now in a better situation because because it, it uh, for me, I like to see great players have success. I mm-hmm. want to see Tua have success. I want to see Jalen Hurts come in and have success. I want to see these young quarterbacks that are watching now in college football come in and be awesome in the NFL. Duds are not good for me. I, I like. I think fans think like, oh, like I'm rooting against you. Like, no, I root for anarchy or I root for greatness. Mid helps no one, right? Unless you're the Cowboys. If you're the Cowboys, <laughs> you can be mid. Always. You can stay mid because we're still going to talk about the Cowboys. But everybody else, that doesn't help me. And and a, and a team that we know is going to go into a season not competitive is even worse. Because now every single week, even if you win, we're like, all right, like they stole one. You know what I mean? So I, I, think, it's, I think it's great that Trevor Lawrence is in a situation where he can develop and thrive now. And – you know, Jacksonville's not the biggest brand, but I'm like, you know, I'm always kind of rooting for those those guys down there. Like, figure it out. Especially <laughs> now, it's to London. It's God. It's well, we were me and Brandon were talking about this the other day. I wonder if London fans are going to be ready for all this newfound success. Like, I know we're not sending the Jags over this weekend to play in the game, but will Jacksonville fans in London show up in their third-party gear to this game? Because now they're the head of the AFC South. They're in the driver's seat at this point. London fans, this one's for you. What a division. Oh. I mean, I Jags mean, are the best, the best in the division. Best division. What oh. happened? <laughs> The Colts O line broke, and then the Titans decided to take the best receiver in their offense and send him away, and inexplicably make so their bad. team worse. You know the Colts are the most disappointing in that division, though, to me, because when when a team consistently lets you down and you keep picking them, it, it starts to make you feel like like you're an idiot, and I'm not an idiot, so. The Colts are making me look like an idiot. I'm like, oh, Matt Ryan, Matty Ice, second chance, gonna have a chip on his shoulder. Are they the most? Dis- they're the most disappointing team in the NFL so far this season, right? I can't For think me. of a team who, relative to expectation, yes. has gone out and underperformed so badly. And I know we're saying this the week after they beat the Chiefs, Thank but you. it wasn't like it looked good in the process. Yeah, no, everything went wrong for the Chiefs. It wasn't the. It was a dumpster fire, and the Colts stayed alive. And honestly, had that not, they not gotten that ridiculous uh, penalty on Chris Jones, they still would have lost. So, no. Like, that's that's a fake W. They should have an asterisk next to it. <laughs> no fake W's, Joy. Yeah, I'm not going to – I know. But it's not – that's way more on the Chiefs than it is on the Colts. The most disappointing team to me this year is the Raiders. Mm. Oh, yes. I like that. Mm. And we, it's it's very early still, but that Belichick coaching tree continues I, to bear I, sour fruit. I, like I that situation s- is bad. I could say it's the bottom of the AFC West because Denver's been a wild disappointment Thank you. I was to start say. the year too. But the difference with Denver and I almost said Oakland. The difference with De- with Denver and the Raiders to me is they're. There, there are you're getting a new coach, a new offensive system. Russ is new there. Like Derek Carr's been there. A lot of those offensive pieces have been there. Obviously, Devontae Adams is new, but he has a relationship with Derek Carr. There should have been a little bit more turnkeyness to the Raiders, whereas Denver has a whole lot of new, a new owner, new first time head coach, new quarterback, new system for everyone. It's, it's just like a lot of new. So it, from that perspective, I do expect Denver. And by the way, they are two and one despite looking garbage. <laughs> so the Raiders are 0 and 3. True. Right, you know what I mean? So like there's still a massive gap here. Like we can talk about how bad Denver's looks, but like they are still, they still manage to scrape together two garbage wins. You know what I mean? So like I, I can't, I can't look, go that far with them. 
Looking at the scores to start their season is the saddest exercise. 17-6 loss to Seattle, 16-9 win over Houston, and the 11-10 win against San Fran this week. The game between them and the Raiders is going to be one where I watch through my hands like this the majority of the time. because That, that, that Niners-Broncos uh, game was poo. Poo. John Morant, John Morant said it. He's right. It was poo. It was poo. It was poo-poo platter. I don't want to give – I don't want to – I don't feel like it's Derek Carr's fault, Joy. If you guys – remember that uh, Bleach Report uh, post about how ter- terrible the Raiders draft has been for like the last five years? Like they, their foundation is broken. Like they are literally a renter center of a, of a franchise right now. <laughs> I don't know that I'm putting it on Derek Carr. Derek Carr managed to pull them together through an absolute nightmare of a situation with Gruden and and all of that. Like I, I've seen Derek Carr do this before. I don't think I'm putting it on Derek Carr either. But at some point or another, they got to get it together. I mean, I, I don't. It's again, it's early in the season, but you haven't won a game yet. Like to to our point about Denver, the wins are hideous, but they're uh, they're wins, you know. They are, and with Josh McDaniels, it's going to be really interesting how we continue to judge him because you're right, Nathaniel Hackett's not only a first-time head coach, but also someone who we look at the situation in Green Bay and go, all right, how much of that are we willing to give you credit for because Aaron Rodgers is there, because Matt LaFleur's there. Josh McDaniels, whatever we've thought about his prior runs at being a head coach that have both end, you know, ended, well, one ended poorly, one ended before it even started in Indianapolis, that whole fiasco, but he's shown an ability to adjust in the last couple of years in New England. We look at him and say that's a pretty competent offensive coach. And so, Joy, I'm kind of with you on the Derek Carr front, less because I actually think he's the problem and more because I know he's the scapegoat if they need to change something, if this keeps going poorly. Josh McDaniels is going to be there, and Derek Carr's got a contract out next year. And so, right, wrong, or indifferent, if this keeps going south, the easiest way for the head coach to sell Mark Davis and say, hey, man, listen, I got to get my guy in here, is to go out and make that move and try and figure out who's coming next in there because this organization has had Derek Carr there for so long. Yeah, and who was the guy last time for Josh McDaniels? Uh, okay. Uh, no, because no, I, 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 I wanted to move on Don't. from this. But... I know we all, we all have growth. We should be allowed to grow. We should be allowed to learn from our mistakes. I'm just saying. Look, it's very early in the season. I, I do think they're going to get a win this year. I think I, I feel good about that. A win? I think the Raiders will eventually get a win. Um, but it, it, it's been, <laughs> no, I mean, I'm being sarcastic. I, I, there's just too much talent on, on that team for it to be looking like this. It doesn't make sense. It's not, it's not right. They've had pieces there. It, it, we expected more of the AFC West, and I think that those expectations are fair. And when you bring in Devontae Adams, who's the number one receiver in the league, or one of the top receivers in the league, depending on what your preference is, he, you got to do more. Like you could, you should be winning a game. 